Hey, we are live here on a Sunday, a Sunday, March 15th. I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, welcome to our live stream. We're doing these about every other week, and I love kind of reaching out and connecting with you in the community here. Uh, let me know in the comments if you can hear me, you can see me okay, and, uh, and we'll get started real quick here. Got an important, uh, a very important, uh, very important video or live stream for you today. Obviously, the stock market has been crazy uh, over the last few weeks, uh, and I, I'm going to share some data with you and show you the facts of, of this virus and why this could be about to get much, much worse. Okay, uh, The market sentiment, the actual uh, infected cases, and the deaths could get much worse, and, uh, and I think you really need to be ready for it, not only in your personal life and with your loved ones, but also with your investments. So we're going to get started here real quick. Uh, I see some people uh, join in the chat. Uh, thank you for being here. I always I love connecting with everybody here in the community like this a little bit more, a little bit more personal, a little bit closer than the, the regular videos we'll, we're able to do. Uh, so let me know if you're able to see me in the, uh, in the chat, uh, see and hear me. <clears throat> but again, uh, you know the, the market crash, it, the market was down uh, about almost 30 percent just in the last few weeks. And uh, you know Friday's, uh, Friday's jump was huge. Got us back to right around 20% down, but uh, but again, I think this this has the potential to get very bad very quickly over the next couple of months. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I've also got a special video uh, for the for the for the community here. I'm going to put it in the Facebook group though. Okay, I had an idea last uh, last Friday, a couple days ago, for a video five stocks that could actually benefit from the uh, from the coronavirus virus epidemic, from the pandemic, um, didn't have a place to put it on the YouTube channel, right? I'm scheduled out about a month and a half on YouTube here and um, didn't uh, didn't have a place to put it for uh, on the schedule. So uh, actually putting it in the in the Facebook group, that Facebook group, uh, great, uh, you know, great conversations going on there, much more personal and, and back and forth. So so we've got that Facebook group and I left a link to the Facebook group in the uh, in the comments section below. I'll go ahead and uh, paste it in the uh, in the comments here as well, just so everybody sees it. But again, that Facebook group, uh, we're gonna have a very a private video in the group uh, coming out at 2.30 today, 2.30 Eastern, so in about an hour and a half, five stocks that uh, will benefit from the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, <clears throat> seeing, uh, seeing everybody join, uh, Raw Devil Dog, uh, see you. Justin says they can see you. Awesome. Miss the bow tie. Yeah, Sundays I like to relax a little bit. Okay, I like to relax, talk with you back and forth, and and just have a good time. So we are going to get started. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see uh, everybody joining in because going to be an important video for how to play this uh, this market. Uh, like I said. Up big Friday uh, could be actually up big uh, this week as well, and I'll get into why that that's going to be. But the worst is not over. Uh, I can almost guarantee you that. Uh, so we're going to talk about you know how bad the coronavirus can get, how to invest depending on your age. Okay, so I'm sharing that that video in the Facebook group about five stocks that could benefit. This one, this live stream, I'm going to keep it a little bit more general and just talk about. You know how to invest according to your age uh, and this market, and then of course we're going to have that qu question and answer section. I uh, love you know going back and forth uh, with the questions with everybody here. A couple of uh, you know housekeeping here. Uh, last week finished up a three video series on investing by your age, so millennials, Gen X, and, and uh, the boomers out there. You know how to look at your portfolio in that context in your age and make sure that you're ready for uh, you know for whatever the market brings. Also talked about a thousand dollar portfolio strategy on Friday. Really loved that uh, putting together that video. This next week, uh, we're actually going to talk about how to how to invest a thousand dollars in real estate. Uh, everybody in the community knows I love real estate investing. Uh, I started my started my pro professional career is as a commercial property analyst and have my own uh, real estate uh, rentals that I that I manage. Uh, but real estate's really uh, you know one of the most critical pieces to your portfolio. Because uh, it really helps to to smooth those uh, those stock market returns. So we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. Got uh, marijuana stocks on Wednesday. Long requested video, um, video everybody's been asking for. And actually, it's our first 
Ask the Bowtie Nation video, okay, there, then on Wednesday. Uh, actually took a comment from one of you in the, uh, in the community there, posted it into our, our, our private Facebook group, and, uh, you know, it's just kind of seeing what everybody's saying about it, about marijuana stocks, uh, which are their favorite, uh, where the investment is going. And we're going to share that on Wednesday. So if you want to be part of that conversation, again, click through the link to the private Facebook group or just look for on Facebook. Look for the group. Let's talk money together and uh, join the group. And uh, again, some great conversations about money and, and investing in that group. Friday, going to start a, a series on investing in gold. Uh, gold has actually been down over the last few days, but uh, up big last year and, and beginning of this year. And I think it could be a, another great asset for your portfolio. So watch for those uh, watch for those videos coming out this week. Uh, see a lot of people uh, a lot of people joining. Uh, I want to get to all your questions uh, towards the end of the video. So uh, so so ask those uh, keep those questions to, to the end of the videos. And uh, we will uh, we will answer those. Uh, just some shout outs. Greg Kamai, good to see you here. Uh, Long term member of the, the Bowtie Nation. <clears throat> uh, Jess, good to see you. Nathan, uh, everyone here. Uh, love love seeing you here. And the the, the uh, Cody Cody's a, a long time another long time member of the nation. There, uh, love seeing you in the live streams and, and talking back and forth. So I want to get started. And uh, I'll get started on the live stream and the topic because, uh, you know, I see a lot of optimism in the market. And, uh, you know, while optimism is generally a great thing, I think a lot of people are jumping into the market, uh, you know, every day on the dips, trying to buy the dips. You hear a lot of people talking about, oh, buy the dips or other cliches like, you know, buy when everyone's, uh, be greedy when everyone else is fearful and, and buy when there's blood in the streets. And that's all smart, but most people don't have a strategy for actually doing that, right? So they hear buy on the dips and then every day when the market goes down, they buy more stock. Well, what happens is when the market is 10% down, you know, over a couple of days or, or uh, you know, over a week, they end up being fully invested in stocks uh, and the market still has so much further to go. So, uh, so sure, buy on the dips, you know, be greedy when others are, others are fearful, but you have to have a strategy for, you know, how to do that. Not jumping in so early that you still, uh, your portfolio still gets destroyed by the bulk of, of all that selling. So, uh, so we're going to talk about this here. Uh, you know, actually came out a video on February 19th, warned that the coronavirus was going to get much worse. Uh, and the next day started that 25, 30% crash. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna claim skill at market timing here. Uh, maybe that was a lot of luck right there, but uh, I still don't think investors, or really anyone, is seeing this for as bad as it could get. Like I said, I still see a lot of uh, optimism. People thinking the market is gonna rebound quickly, and this is the worst it's gonna be. And I, and I don't think that's really where it is. So I want to share some numbers with you first. Okay, we're gonna go into just the estimates of uh, how bad the coronavirus could get, some numbers with it, just to kind of give you an idea here of, of how bad this could get and uh, kind of the effect on the market. These are all going to be from some reputable sources, okay? So from from uh, professionals, uh, medical experts, that kind of thing. And, and generally, I'm going to take the most optimistic estimates, okay? Because um, uh, I, I think even the most optimist, optimistic estimates are going to be the ones that are going to show you really how bad this could get. So uh, there has been just a, an explosion in new cases every day uh, here in the U.S. and even on a limited testing. So I want what I want to do. I want to share with you real quick a graphic that shows just the the number of tests per million population uh, for each country. Right. So you see some of these uh, some of the really bad countries that that have been hit. Uh, Italy, South Korea. Uh, I think uh, you know Italy just passed like something like seventeen, eighteen thousand cases. Uh, reported and the country is on complete lockdown uh, and a lot of people look at the relatively small cases reported in the US uh, just something like 3,000 so far reported this morning uh, in the US and they say well you know we're getting off pretty pretty well US isn't nearly as bad as, as a lot of these other countries but you got to look at the number of tests there's actually been done as well okay so just 26 people out of every million population in the US has been tested okay compared to Countries like Italy, like uh, you know, like South Korea, that have tested thousands of people per million of their population, uh, so uh, orders of hundreds of times, you know. So, so just uh, so so South Korea has tested uh, you know thirty eight times as many people as a percentage of their population. 
Uh, Italy has, has tested, uh, or South Korea has tested 157 times their population. So what we're going to see is when these tests become available, and, uh, and, and Congress, uh, the House, just passed their bill Friday night, right? The, uh, the stimulus bill, uh, if you want to call it that. It's going to the Senate tomorrow, and then the president's already tweeted his support for it, so he'll sign it. Uh, that bill makes testing available for free for anyone that wants it. Okay, testing available for free. Uh, it has been uh, on a paid basis or an insurance paid basis. So a lot of people haven't been getting their testing, and it hasn't been available. So when that testing becomes widespread free for everyone, uh, you're going to see a surge in these cases. Okay, so <clears throat> so when free testing is made available, we're going to see a, a new cases explode. And in fact, uh, a Dr. Macquarie of the Johns Hopkins University estimates that there are already 50,000 minimum, 50,000 to half a million cases in the United States going unnoticed. Uh, and this is all the people that have been infected but haven't gotten tested. You gotta, you gotta remember that 80% of people that get infected with this coronavirus, this COVID-19, just have mild symptoms, right? Uh, basically, it seems like the flu. So they don't feel like they need to go get tested. They don't even go to the doctor because it's just a flu and they'll get over it in a few days. And that's fine. And where I think the danger is here is that those other, that other 20% that has uh, more severe symptoms and those higher death rates uh, for older people. Uh, so what we see is uh, people looking at this kind of just like the flu and it's no big deal. And it is for um, the majority of the population, anyone under, really under 50. Uh, but what we really have to worry about is, you know, the infected cases for that, that older, older generation. Uh, look at some other, uh, some other statistics, some other commentary here. Uh, so Angela Merkel, uh, Chancellor of Germany, said that estimated that 50 to 70 percent of the German population uh, could be infected by this uh, before it's all, all said and done. And why I point to that is because if you look up in the dictionary for conservatism, uh, you're going to see a picture of a Angela Merkel. Okay, Germans aren't known for their their brash uh, brash statements. Okay, so I can say that. You know, that 50 to 70 percent estimate is probably grounded in some research and some fact. Um, now, I think part of this is she just wants people to take this as serious as possible uh, and, you know, self-isolate if, if they can and, and that kind of thing. So maybe not quite as bad as 50 to 70 percent. Uh, but if you look at other other uh, other quotes, the medical director of Congress and the Supreme Court okay, has said that, he believes that at least 70 million to 150 million will be infected by this in the U.S., okay, by the, by the time that's done. So if you look at the percentages, about 330 million people in the United States, 70 million is about 20%, okay? So that's actually would be fairly uh, well off, okay? That would actually be getting out pretty easy with this if, uh, if other estimates are for 50 to 70% of the population. So even if we take that 70 million estimate for infected cases in the U.S. Uh, and, and remember, you know, when you look at how many people are reported infected, uh, tested and reported, uh, just 3,000 so far today, uh, seems like nothing. You know, it seems like this is very little. But you got to understand, again, 80% of the people that get infected uh, are probably not going to be tested and reported because it's just mild flu symptoms, okay? So, so again, we go back to that idea that even while it's reported that only 3,000 people have this virus, uh, it could be as high as 50,000 or half a million, uh, according to uh, you know, according to that that professor at Johns Hopkins, uh, because there are so many people that are just you know treating it like the flu and, and getting over it. Um, so 70 to 150 million people infected in the U.S. Uh, and then now now when we go to death rate, okay, death rate so far for U.S. cases reported has been about two percent. In China, it was about 3%. Uh, again, that's because you know, you've got the death rate uh, divided by the people that are just reported and tested. Uh, but if you actually use that against the people that actually have the virus that aren't necessarily reported because they're just staying home at, like, like it's the flu, uh, then the death rate is actually much lower. But the most optimistic death rate I've seen on this, the mortality rate, uh, has been put out by Morningstar, and they believe it's going to be about half a percent uh, in the United States, right? Which is, is again... Uh, much lower than a lot of the, the other uh, statistics we've seen in a lot of other countries. So this is an extremely positive and optimistic uh, uh, scenario, probably a best case scenario for half a percent mortality rate on this. 
So now let's look at this. So even if we assume just 70 million people infected in the United States, that's only 21% of the population. Uh, so I'm not sure how we get out that easy. But even on that optimistic half a percent mortality rate, that means 350,000 Americans are going to lose their life on this. Okay. Um, and and you, you think about it, I mean, so far we're at like 66 this morning. Uh, so what happens when, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, te the, the number of infected cases reaches tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? Uh, what happens when those death rates reach thousands, tens of thousands, and even higher? Uh, this is, can all spiral out of control very quickly. Uh, so, you know, not just, not just uh, the, the, the investing side and the economic side and, and the financial side like we'll, we'll talk about, but just the emotional and the personal side to this. Okay, I, I, need, I, I need you to please take this very seriously. Okay, people talk about, well, 30,000 people die from the flu each year and this is only 66 so far. Well, yeah, but understand this could get much, much worse. Okay, this, this virus is 10 times more uh, deadly than the flu, okay? And once we reach, you know, into the hundreds of thousands of people dying from this flu, uh, I think perspectives are going to change and people aren't going to say, well, this is just another flu. Yeah, for if you're 50 and under, then this is just another flu by and the most part. OK, if you look at life expectancy by uh, by age group, OK, or mortality rates by age group for this, then under 50 and it's only it's, it's like less than half a percent. So so not a big deal. What happens when you get to that? Uh, 60 to 70 uh, age group, that's about 4% mortality rate. 70 to 80 is actually about 10%. So one in 10 people, 70 to 80 years old to get this virus will die from it. Okay, uh, 80 and above is jumps to 15%. Okay, so almost two in 10 people that get this virus, 80 and above will die from it. Okay, uh, so that's, that's the part that we need to worry about, right? And, you know, a lot of people out there are saying, well, you know, they're not really um, members, they're not really uh, contributing to the economy quite so much, so it's not going to have a big economic effect. Or uh, you know, it's it's people don't care because they're under 50, so it's not really so much a big deal other than just getting the flu for them. Well, okay, don't be an asshole. Okay, don't be a jerk. You know, I guarantee you, if you were 60 or older and you were looking at this, you would be much more uh, much more serious about it. Okay, so everybody just needs to look at this. Look at not just their own perspective, but also somebody that might be a little bit more older, a little older, you know, 60s and above. Look at it from their perspective and how deadly this thing can get. And please take this thing seriously, okay? Um, you know, we're gonna get to uh, we're gonna get to how to invest uh, during all of this uh, uh, very quickly, right? Right now. Uh, but I just I I, I want to say, yeah, if you've got family members that are older then uh, they need to be the ones that are in isolation, that are, you know, quarantining themselves out. Uh, I think actually Britain is, is probably handling this best, better than anyone. They actually announced today that in, a, in about a week, they're going to start self, they're going to start isolating uh, that portion of the population. So 60 and older, uh, they're going to, they're going to have, ask them to self-isolate. Um, and actually, I think, you know, that's, I'm surprised this isn't Kind of the the strategy for this uh, to just have everyone else go about their life, go about you know business as usual, contribute to the economy, uh, because yeah, even if you get it, it's going to be a mild flu probably, and, and you're going to get over it in in a week or so, a couple of weeks, and uh, and then you're going to have the immunity, and you're not going to be that carrier. Okay, that's very important. Is that everyone you know 50 and under, it's all just the flu. It's it's no big deal, but you're a carrier, and you're a potential carrier to one of these at risk people. Okay. So if you've got the, the, the COVID-19, the coronavirus, uh, not so bit, much big of a deal as, as you are, but if you come into a contact with anybody in these age groups, the 60 and older, or come into contact with somebody that's going to have contact with them, then you, know, you are very much contributing to, uh, to their death. Okay? So what the strategy should be, let everyone else 50 and under go about their, their business as usual, uh, and then somehow self-isolate or quarantine, and that sounds harsh, but quarantine everyone 60 and older, okay? So they aren't exposed to, uh, to all these cases that are grow going around. It's pretty much, pretty much impossible right now at this point to, uh, to keep, keep the virus from infecting larger and larger portions of the population. What we can do is take that 50 million people that are over the age of 65 uh, and keep them isolated from the rest of the population. Let the rest of the population get the virus you know, work through it uh, as, you know, work up that immunity so they're no longer carriers. Then in a month, 
the virus pretty much just dies out because all these other people have immunities to it and aren't going to act as carriers to the uh, to the older population. Uh, you know, just a soapbox, just, just what, what I think should happen. Uh, obviously, you know, if you've got people going, the vast majority of the population going on business as usual, you're not going to get that economic effect. Uh, you're still going to have the, the consumer spending and everything's going to be, uh, you know, just, just as it usually is. Uh, and then you're not going to have all those millions of carriers that can potentially infect uh, the, those at-risk populations. So again, uh, you know, uh, 60 and older population, uh, pre-existing conditions, cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases, those are the people that, that we really need to worry about, really need to watch out for. So now I want to kind of shift gears. So we've seen that, you know, up to 300 or probably minimum 300,000, 200,000, 300,000 people could die from this, which is like 10 years of the flu. OK, so if you're sitting there thinking this is just like the regular flu, it's no big deal. Uh, it could, it's going to get a lot worse. OK, it's going to be many, many times uh, the uh, the deaths we see in the flu each year. Uh, so so please take it seriously. So. What we're, what we're seeing is uh, market was up huge Friday, okay? President declared a national state of emergency. Uh, Congress, passed, or how, the House passed its bill. It's going to the Senate and likely to be approved by, uh, by the president. Lots of things in there that are going to uh, help keep the economy on a footing. Uh, there will be bailouts for some of the, for the airlines, the cruise uh, industry, for a lot of these. So generally, I think the, the government is actually for once doing a decent job at uh, being in front of this as far as economically. Uh, as well as, you know, finally getting the testing out and, and that kind of thing. But uh, so we saw so we saw a big bump Friday, 10 percent uh, this week. It's probably going to be actually a pretty positive uh, week as well, uh, just because, you know, that stuff's going to get passed and people are going to look to that. And, and the cases haven't jumped yet. But, you know, when we do start looking at that, those cases and the deaths increase, I think that panic is going to come back. OK, um, you know, anytime. OK, so so right now we're at 66 deaths. Uh, and the market's down 20%. What happens when it does reach into the tens of thousands, into the thousands, into the hundreds of thousands? Uh, that market panic is going to come back. We're going to be uh, see some some kind of quarantine measures like we see in Italy, France, and Spain. Uh, right now in Italy, uh, Italy and France, or Italy and Spain, uh, the only thing open as far as consumers is uh, supermarkets and pharmacies. Italy and Spain, you know, uh, 60 million population in Italy, 47 million in Spain. Um, the only thing, if you, you, the only thing you can do is sit around your house or go to the supermarket or go to the pharmacy. That's it. Everything else is closed. Uh, some industrial production still going on. Uh, some government services still open, but uh, other than that, complete lockdown. Everything's shut. The military is out in the street enforcing these uh, these quarantines. Uh, and I do believe there is a very, very good chance we're going to see something like that, at least in parts of the United States, uh, if not nationally. Uh, the only way we're going to be able to get out in front of this. So I don't think the end of the selling is done. And I want to talk about how to invest, how to be ready for this. Uh, so uh, there's really, I think, two different groups you want to look at uh, uh, when you're thinking about how to invest for this. Okay, Those with more than five, five to ten uh, years to invest, and those with less. Okay, and why I say that is because, yeah, this could be just a, a one-year kind of thing. Uh, we could see a, a, a harsh drop in in the stock market, uh, but you know, near zero percent interest rates. Uh, you know, gasoline, uh, gasoline just dropped. Uh, price of oils down. Uh, this is all you know, and all the the fiscal, the fiscal side, is going to be. A, uh, a stimulus on the economy. So as soon as we we uh, you know get the uh, get the COVID nineteen the coronavirus out of the system, and and start uh, you know start seeing those cases diminish and drop, then uh, the economy is going to jump back, right? So it should be a fairly quick and, and fairly good uh, rebound. Uh, but you know if uh, if you've got less than five years to invest, it might take it it might take that long to uh, to rebound back to those to those highs. So I want you to be cautious. You know, we don't know how bad stocks could get. We don't know. Uh, you know, we, we have an idea for how bad the coronavirus could get, uh, but we don't know. You know, how bad it could be on the market. So, you know, for for utmost of care, uh, what are they saying? An, an abundance of caution, right? That's what they're saying uh, when they self isolate. Uh, for an abundance of caution, if you've got less than five years left to retirement or needing that money. I think you need to be extremely cautious here. Uh, if you do have more than five years, five to ten years or, or more to retirement, 
I think you can just uh, you can take a, maybe a longer term strategy. You don't have to be quite as cautious, uh, but yeah, if you've got less than five years to invest, uh, it sucks to sell some sell after this crash to sell after twenty percent. Uh, maybe wait a couple of days to see if the market can rise a little bit more, and then start selling a little bit. But you, it it can get worse, and it doesn't you don't want it to completely destroy your portfolio if you need that money within the next five years or so. Okay, so maybe you uh, you sell some of the stocks, uh, sell some of the more the more risky, the more volatile stocks. Get your money in, in uh, safer cash. Maybe some of the safety sectors like staples, uh, utilities, things like that. Uh, and really seek that maximum protection, okay? Like I said, we're gonna talk about uh, how to invest $1,000 in real estate tomorrow. We've got an, a gold investing video coming out Friday. Look for those, just look for those other assets that you can put your money into that are gonna be less volatile than stocks. Uh, very important if you have less than five years of investing left to retirement and needing that money. If you've got longer than that, five or 10 years uh, to retirement, then I think you can kind of follow a, a, a disciplined strategy of, of yeah, going back into the market, maybe putting some of your cash to work, uh, but it does need to be disciplined, okay? Like we started off the video saying, you know, a lot of people are buying on the dips, but uh, they th those dips are every day. So they go into the market, they put some of their cash to work every single day, and pretty soon they are fully invested and they got no other no other ammunition, right? So it needs to be a disciplined strategy. Uh, and we've shared what mine is uh, on the uh, on the channel uh, a couple of times in the, over the last couple of weeks. Basically, I waited till the market was down 15% and I put some of my cash to work. Then I waited till the market was down 25%, which actually ended up being uh, Thursday. I think the market was down 25% uh, total uh, as of Thursday. I took some more of my cash, put it back into some stocks, and, uh, and the next one is 35%. So if the market falls 35% from the peak, I'm gonna take a little bit more of my money, put it in stocks. Finally, if the market falls 45% from this peak, then I'm gonna take the rest of my cash, put it back in stocks, and that's where I'll be, okay? Uh, but you don't wanna be putting money back into stocks every single day uh, because, yeah, you're gonna be tapped out after after four or five or 10%. Um, and I still think you need to be a little conservative on this, okay? Uh, there's a lot of optimism in the market, okay? I've been polling people in the nation uh, on the Facebook group, and and everybody is like, oh, this is just a short-term dip. It's just a common flu, basically. Uh, you know, I'm investing uh, with it with every time stocks go down. Uh, so I think, you know, once we see those cases rise into the hundreds of thousands, into the millions even possibly, uh, and those that death rate increase, I think probably uh, people are going to start to panic a little bit more and think, okay, maybe this isn't, um, you know, isn't just a, a common flu or, or isn't uh, going to be a sh quick, a quick hit to the market. And that's when we're going to see, that's when we're, we're going to see another leg down in the market. So I think even as you're putting your money to work in stocks uh, at that maybe uh, 25 or 35 or 45 percent down, then still think about those large established companies that uh, no matter how long this lasts. Those, those are going to be the ones that are, are going to survive. Uh, very important. One of the things I actually talk about in the Facebook video that's posting here in about an hour. Uh, so again, you know, go join the, uh, the private Facebook group we've got there. Uh, Let's Talk Money Together is what it's called. And, uh, and one of the things I talk about in that video that's coming out is it's very important to start looking at your ba the balance sheet of these companies, okay? Uh, companies, you want to make sure they have sufficient cash on reserve, so cash in the balance sheet. Uh, and lower debt, okay, because that's going to be critical for these uh, these these companies that uh, you know might be on the edge. The recession's coming; they're going to see their revenues fall. Uh, if you can be in stable companies with a high amount of cash and low amount of debt, those are going to be the ones that are going to have the financial flexibility to survive uh, no matter what happens in the market. There are going to be bankruptcies in this uh, in this market, uh, and, and you need to be need to be watching that. Um, one last thing before we get to the question and answer, I see a lot of people uh, uh, talking, uh, uh, asking questions in there. I want to get to all of those, but the best thing anyone can do in this market, honestly, is make more money. Okay, and that sounds that sounds well, well no shit. That's easy to say, uh, but you know, if you even if you don't have any cash set aside to take advantage of these lower stock market prices, uh, if you've got a side hustle or uh, an online business or anything. Even if it's just doing something five hours a week to make that extra couple of hundred dollars each week, you know, maybe an extra five hundred a month to invest. That's like as if you had that cash uh, setting aside. Okay, so so if you've got uh, if you can find an extra five hundred dollars to invest each month 
not necessarily saying to invest it, but $500 to deposit into your investing account each month. Uh, the end of, well, then we've got, uh, you know, about 10 months left uh, of the year. That's five grand. You know, that's $5,000 that you can use to take advantage of lower stock market prices and, uh, you know, really, really take advantage of, of this whole thing as if you can. So a lot of videos on the channel about making more money, about finding that side hustle that really works for you and, and can actually become, you know, kind of a, a, a full time uh, business that you enjoy doing, get you out of the nine to five rat race. Uh, so again, probably best thing anyone can do is, is just find that way to make a little bit extra extra money uh, over the next couple of months at least and, and invest that money. So now I want to get to uh, get to the questions here, and I'm going to scroll back and see if we had uh, you know all the questions we had earlier uh, in the uh, in the live stream. If I don't see your question, go ahead and ask it in. Ask it again. Make sure that you uh, you have a question mark on there so I can see it. Uh, see that it's a question, and uh, and I'll get to that again. Though very special video posting in the Facebook group, uh, the private Facebook group we have there on Facebook. Uh, Let's talk money together is the name posting at 2 30 uh, eastern time today five stocks that will benefit from this coronavirus okay not just will benefit from a market rebound but i think five companies that will actually see revenue increase from this uh from this virus so uh make sure you click through there join the group because uh, we got some great conversations happening there in uh in the facebook group so i'm going to uh, i'm going to look go back and look through here uh wade says good call on drop yeah Again, uh, you know, the day before this whole thing started, I, I, I warned everybody that uh, the coronavirus was going to get much worse. Uh, I was just looking at the spread in China. Uh, it wasn't really spreading to a whole lot of the countries uh, yet, but it was a big thing in China, spreading a little bit outside, and uh, probably better lucky than good on the market timing, but, uh, but definitely called, uh, called that one pretty well. Um, so uh, Hanover Fist... Uh, great screen name there. Uh, how long do you guys see this correction possible recession lasting? Okay, uh, so you know, great question. That's really the big question right now. And like I said, I think it could be fairly, uh, you know, fairly short, fairly quick. Um, this this virus spreads so much faster than anything else we've ever we've seen. Uh, really, uh, you know, very few precedents in history. Uh, you know, you've got maybe Ebola, uh, some of these other viruses that spread faster. But this thing spreads, uh, and what they use, they call it a R-naught, right, for how fast it spreads, you know, for how many people one person infects. And this is actually like a 2.2. So for every person that has this, uh, they give it to, on average, 2.2 other people, okay? Whereas the uh, the common flu, I think, is is just over one. It's like 1.2. Uh, the bird flu that we saw in 2000, and, uh, I want to say 2013, uh, which actually ki- ended up killing 60,000 people, the bird flu did, uh, in the U.S. And that only had an R-naught of like 1.3. So much lower, much, uh, much easier to fight this when you know, one person isn't giving it to, to more people. So uh, coronavirus actually uh, much, much more contagious uh, than, uh, than a lot of these others. But that just means that more people are going to get it faster, okay? Uh, that uh, and it, and you know once you have this, just like the common flu and, and a lot of these others, then uh, after you have it, you know, you work through the system, the symptoms after maybe a couple of weeks, and then you build up an immunity to it, right? So you cease to become a carrier of that or a potential carrier. Uh, so that just means you know the faster this, this thing spreads, uh, the more people get over it, recover, and uh, you know and the faster it works through the uh, the population. So uh, you know. Probably a very hard uh, first quarter, second quarter. I'm thinking even into the, maybe even even to the third quarter, uh, going to be hard on the economy, uh, and then into that fourth quarter, probably going to see it uh, it rebound. Uh, the real worry here is not necessarily the economic effect, the the recession, because like I said, I think the the government's actually doing pretty uh, pretty. Uh, positive uh, steps on this, uh, pretty proactive, other than the initial testing. They kind of screwed that up royally because uh, we just don't have the testing available. But, uh, you know, some of these other things, uh, declaring a national state of emergency, they're going to be buying oil for the uh, strategic reserve, which is going to help support their oil prices. Uh, they're going to make uh, a lot of these uh, these payments to people, uh, you know, so, so social safety net. So, uh, you know, that's going to help the economy rebound pretty quickly. But what we will see and what we've talked about in the video is 
just that emotional toll and the psychological toll that seeing you know hundreds of thousands of people die from this and seeing millions of people infected, the toll that that's going to take on the markets and on the economy. Okay, uh, people aren't going to want to go out. Okay, uh, you know people just we're going to get to a point where people are just going to be afraid to go outside, and that's what's going to hurt. Uh, so great question. Uh, David wants to know about CCL stock. You know, so Carnival Cruise Lines. Uh, this is actually one that we were in in January uh, in the dividend portfolio. I, I like the company. It's a great company, but all of these travel related stocks you have to be careful with. And I wouldn't I wouldn't be jumping into them yet. OK, even though uh, president says he's going to support some of these uh, industry the cruise industry is going to get support. I'd almost guarantee you that the airlines will almost definitely get some kind of government support, bailout, uh, usually probably uh, low cost loans, that kind of thing. But uh, it's still going to get, I mean, the, just the extent to which this is going to get uh, to where we're going to have, you know, probably a national travel ban, I'm thinking. Uh, other, you know, there's just measures that we haven't seen yet that we're going to have. Uh, just because this is going to get so much worse in terms of number affected and deaths uh, that we have not seen the worst for these for these stocks for these travel and, and tourism related stocks. So you know when you finally do look at these companies like CCL, like uh, like Hilton Hotels. So what you want to do you you want to look at the hotels, you want to look at the car rentals, uh, you want to look at the the uh, tours. Uh, the uh, the cruise industry the cruise stocks uh, you could look at some of the, uh, the the travel booking stocks like Expedia and uh, you know Priceline and, and all those stocks uh, what you want to start what you want to look at is you know again that balance sheet you know how much cash they have on hand uh, you want to look at how much debt they have when that debt matures is also very important okay look at uh, and this is a lot of financial analysis but this is what you have to do okay you have to go into the financial statements look at when that debt matures uh, to see, you know, if they're able to uh, to get through this without having to refinance a big part of their debt uh, and, and maybe uh, you know get into trouble, uh, you want to look at uh, <clears throat> so so how much cash they have on hand, what are those interest payments, uh, and how much their revenue can drop and still be able to cover those interest payments. Okay, because that's really the question. Okay, a, a lot of people are saying, uh, well. You know, uh, stocks are cheap now. Stocks are down 20% from their peak. Uh, but when we talk about valuation on stocks, when we talk about how cheap a stock is, most people are talking about something like the price to earnings ratio, right? Or the price to sales ratio. Well, yeah, the price has come down uh, 20%. But you got to think about that other side of the equation too, okay? Sales and earnings are going to come down hard, especially for some of these travel and, and tourism related stocks, okay? So you can't necessarily say that uh, stocks are cheap because uh, you know we sh we're still using those earnings from the last four quarters or the from the sales from the last year to measure this price to sales or price to earnings. Okay, you know, so if stocks come down, but then those earnings come crashing down too, then those stocks could be still be fairly expensive. Okay, uh, and that's really what you want to think about is is how much can sales come down on these companies uh, without them running into problems with paying their debt uh, and with still keeping solvent. Okay. So, uh, so great, uh, you know, great question there from, from David. Uh, what about BIV, BSV are similar for safety? This market might go down a lot more driven fear. Uh, so, you know, bond funds. Yeah. I would say bond funds would, would be a good asset to be in. Um, you know, the, the, the place that rates are at really worries me because near zero rates work for no one. Okay. But it is going to be a relatively safe place to be in uh, while the stock market comes comes down further. Okay, uh, Fed is expected to cut again this week, uh, probably another 50 basis points, so half a percent, uh, maybe even more, maybe 75 basis points. Uh, so that's going to keep uh, keep a lid on rates uh, as well as you know global rates are just near zero or negative. So bonds are, are still going to be doing pretty well. Uh, pot stocks need a catalyst. Uh, so Eduardo says pot stocks need a catalyst. They're high risk, high return sector. A lot of pain now. Yeah. And, and you know, you'll see in that, that video we do on Wednesday, I actually share uh, five pot stocks that you can invest in. Some of them just related to the industry, some of them directly in the industry. Uh, there's, there's a big, there's a short term play and a long term play in that uh, because I, I think they've fallen so hard that there is some value in them for right now and some headline. Uh, potential there, but um, you you still need to look at that longer term picture if you're going to be in for the for the longer term. Uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> Giorgio thinks it says he hopes it keeps dropping. Uh, prices are nowhere near where they were eight years ago. Salaries have not changed much. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, uh, and again, like we said on the, the individual stock basis, but if you look at the market in general, uh, people will say that, yeah, stocks have, are come down 20%. They're cheap. Start buying stocks. Well, you know what? What if that, those earnings come down for the overall market? And they will. Uh, so stocks are not necessarily cheap. Uh, even the 20% down that we're at now, we've still only wiped out maybe uh, is about two or three years of this bull market. You know, and stocks have been rising for the last 10 years. Uh, so, so there is a lot further down to go, uh, potentially. Uh, who else? So what other questions we have? Uh, Minds in Motion, good to see you here. Uh, Minds in Motion, a great channel here on YouTube. I've been a long-term member of the, uh, of the community. Uh, Hanover Fist has another question. Will gold rise? Uh, will the new Fed mon money printing? A great question, and it's actually been kind of odd that gold has been falling as much lately over the last week. Uh, I think there is an opportunity in gold here uh, over the last week. Really what you see in gold is, is a couple of things. One is people are kind of rushing to cash anyway. Uh, so they're kind of selling out of gold. Uh, that's kind of hurting the price. But really a lot of the gold, the, the gold market, the gold price drop is, okay, tech. So, so if we see a uh, low recession and uh, lower, you know, lower, uh, lower business growth, low, lower economic growth, we're, <clears throat> we're gonna see a lot lower demand for those tech products that gold goes into, okay? Gold is actually a very good con conductor of electricity, so it's used in a lot of tech products. So, of course, you know, if we stop making quite so many of those tech products, then the demand for gold comes down uh, from that point. Uh, consumer demand for jewelry, probably also going to see a hit. Uh, just, you know, one on the higher prices of gold that we've seen over the last couple of months. But also, you know, as people uh, start to protect their own cash flow, their own savings account, maybe they're going to start buying less gold. Uh, central bank demand. You know, if central banks are start to turn on that uh, that spigot for uh, for stimulus, for public stimulus, fiscal stimulus, then maybe they're going to be uh, you know withdrawing from that uh, those reserves instead of adding to them. Uh, over the last ten years, there's been a huge uh, huge demand surge from central banks buying gold, but uh, of course you know that might turn around a little bit over the, the short term. So that's why gold has been coming down a little bit at this point. I, I think it's a decent value, and again we've got that. Uh, that video posting on Friday where I show you, uh, you know, how to how to analyze gold, how to see if it's a good investment right now. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, Joshua, Joshua coming to us from Germany. Love seeing that. Love seeing uh, everybody, you know, from uh, from from where everybody's coming in, in from. Uh, what else do we see? Consumer work, Gilead, uh, right? Will be in Spain isn't even there, and we are in lockdown. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, if you want to look at how bad it can get and how bad the lockdown situation can get, look at Europe and uh, you know three countries already. France has closed all the schools. I think they've also closed the uh, the retail establishments. They've closed the bars and and a lot of the other places. But but Italy and Spain have both closed down everything except uh, you know pharmacies and grocery stores. Uh, some some public services are still open. Industrial production is still on a limited basis. But other than that, the entire countries are sh shut down, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so I uh, actually haven't been, uh, so Tim wants to know how, how, it, how it is in Germany. I uh, haven't really looked at Germany a whole lot because it hasn't been one of those, those big cases. And, and, you know, and I think part of this is just because the government has been taking it more seriously. Uh, like I said, Angela Merkel actually said that she came out and said she thought 50 to 70 percent of the population would get this virus. Uh, and I think that opened up a lot of people's eyes. Uh, people started taking it more seriously and, and maybe taking a little bit some of those mo uh, measures. Uh, but it is definitely the World Health Organization just uh, said that uh, Europe is now the epicenter of this. Okay, cases started to come down in China, and uh, and it's now the epicenter is in Europe. So so about to get much worse there as well. Uh, <clears throat> so what else? Uh, who else do we have? CCL stock already answered that one. Uh, so. So I've got a moderate position in Disney and Microsoft. You foresee them going down more or buy more now. Okay, uh, you know, Justin wants to know uh, about some of these, uh, and I'll, I'll just call it larger caps like Disney, Microsoft. Uh, and, and again, you know, uh, large companies, that's, that's where I would stay is in those large established large cap or mega cap companies, uh, the ones with good financial positions, so lots of cash on the balance sheet, uh, able to pay off that debt as it, or pay, pay those debt payments even if sales and, and that comes off. Uh, I do see them going down. I see everybody going down pretty much. 
uh, you know, uh, coming down over the next couple of months. Uh, but I wouldn't buy more now. Okay. Uh, again, you need that disciplined approach. Uh, okay. And, and not only is that going to help you uh, know, you know, uh, give you give you points when to take advantage of this. So so you know, so, so I'm going to invest more at 25 percent down. I'm going to invest more at 35 percent down. But it also kind of creates a stress reliever too, right? You know, everybody's looking at these markets thinking, okay, should I get in now? Should I get in now? Every day they're asking these questions and just beating yourself up over, over man, I got to get into this market. Well, you don't need to, okay? Create that disciplined strategy where you know when you're going to start investing your money, when you're going to, each point when you're going to put more money to work uh, so you don't have to come back to the markets and worry about it every single day, okay? Two things here. One is uh, this disciplined approach it lets you take advantage of those uh, 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 of the lower prices, right? So with my approach, with my strategy that I'm using, 15%, 25, 35, 45% down, I'm able to save enough cash back so I can take advantage if the market reaches these points. Okay, I don't have to time the worst of the market, uh, and, and you're probably not going to, right? You're not going to get in on the very bottom of this market. But what you what you can do is taking advantage of of you know as far as bad as the market gets. And then eventually you're gonna help. You're gonna be. You're gonna benefit from that rebound, okay? Because the market will rebound. Um, if you buy in all now, like I said, if you if you go back to the market every single day, buy in on that dip, then uh, then you're out of cash in, in the next couple of weeks, and and that's it, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so what else we have? Uh, I just want to say hi and love the videos. Uh, weed kills coronavirus. No, not really, but uh, good good thought, I guess. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, the unspoken China's rates are going down because they're refusing. Uh, come on. It, you don't know that really. Uh, see so yeah, a lot of, a lot of conspiracy in this thing. A, a lot of, uh, you know, things that, that aren't re really backed up by fact. That's the kind of thing we have to avoid. If we want to really avoid the panic, uh, treat this thing as, uh, as bad as you can treat it seriously and, uh, and just look to those, those numbers. Uh, yeah. So uh, who else we got? Uh, any good moral stocks? Not quite sure what you mean on moral stocks. Go ahead and uh, you know let me know uh, what are the moral stocks. I guess the uh, the non tobacco, non casino stocks. There, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I mean, look at CDC, not news outlets. You'd be surprised at. Uh, see, that's that's not true either. Uh, and, and you got to look at okay, you know, like we said, even the number of cases that are reported as infected. You gotta look at how many people are being tested, okay? And, and uh, you know, if we're only testing 26 out of out of each million people in the United States, yeah, you're not gonna have that many people reported, okay? Uh, there, this is mu a much bigger, uh, much bigger problem than uh, than than what that what I think most people really see it as. Uh, <clears throat> so what else? Uh, no bow tie. Uh, okay, beaten down. even the dollar cost average now. Keep it, keep it up or buy beaten. Okay, Terry wants to know position have lost over a hundred thousand in the past two months. I, I mean, a lot of people are down. It's it's really the percentage you're down. Even with dollar cost averaging down, keep it up or buy other beaten down stocks. Again, like we've talked about, you have to have that disciplined approach. Uh, you have to know when you're going to be investing, uh, investing more in stocks, and it depends on. Uh, like we talked about, where you're at in your investing, uh, your investing life. Okay, if you've got less than five years uh, left to invest to needing that money, I want you to take this uh, more cautiously. Okay, because um, you know we don't know how bad the market could get. It could get much, much worse than even the last two bull market, bear market crashes we've seen. Okay, last two bear market crashes were down 50%, and it took many years for the the, the market to rebound to that point. Okay, if you look back to the uh, to the Great Depression, you know, stocks were down 86% and took many, many years to uh, to get back to that point. So if you need your money in less than five years, I, I want you to take this more cautiously, probably more cautiously than you think you think you need to take it. Um, yeah, okay, it's gonna suck if that if the market rebounds quickly after a few months and 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 you're still and you're sitting in a little bit more cash or bonds or or whatever. But you, you got to protect your downside, okay? Uh, if you need the money in less than five years. If you need the money more and longer, then you can maybe uh, make that plan for reinvesting in stocks and, and getting back in the market. Um, <clears throat> so what else? Uh, do you think Japan can happen to us, uh, like our market being unable to rise back? Okay, so Financial Scrub wants to know about uh, if Japan can answer happen to us. And this is 
this is almost completely unrelated to the coronavirus. Uh, it's, it's really more of a rates thing. And Japan went through, what was that, two decades of, of almost no growth, uh, almost no stock market growth. And, and yeah, I, I think it's, it's a very real possibility uh, that you see those, those low growth rates. In fact, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the big banks, the brokerage firms were, were calling for maybe a 4 or 5% or even, even a 6% was, was really the highest uh, stock market returns uh, for a decade, decade annualized returns over the next 10 years. And that's just because where stocks were, were right now, kind of the low productivity rate we, we're seeing in the U.S. Uh, over the past few years and, uh, and th those low rates. You got to understand that low, low rates seem great. You know, 0% interest rate seems great, but it's just it's just causes so much uh, financial dislocation in, in, the, uh, in the economy. You know, at 0%, banks can't make money. So instead of lending that money out and getting a marginal return, they basically just sit, sit on it. So you get no lending, uh, you get no economic growth, uh, even without inflation. Uh, can you help me with dollar cost averaging? Uh, again, this, this whole idea of dollar cost averaging, buying on the dips, uh, you need to take that beyond just a theme, beyond just a, a catchphrase, okay? Dollar cost averaging is great, but uh, you need to have a plan for it. So you're not going back into the market with your cash every single day trying to buy at the low because you'll never find the low. Okay, so dollar cost averaging is great. Two things on that. One is have that plan for, you know, okay, so if stocks fall 25%, I'm gonna put some cash to work. If they fall more, 35%, I'm gonna put more cash to work. But also, like we said, the best thing you can do is figure out ways to make more money now, right? And that's starting a side hustle, that's starting an online business. You know, start something that obviously doesn't require a lot of cash to start up. I mean, you can start a website for, for less than like five bucks a month, right? Uh, so start that side hustle, start, start that side business. That's going to create more cash that you can take advantage of these lower prices, uh, and, and have a uh, you know have a a list of stocks you want to buy, right? Whether it's adding more to your positions you have now, or or maybe adding to your uh, to to new stocks, uh, but have that list ready for when the market does hit that point, and you can put more cash into it. Uh, again, I would say, you know, as far as stocks to buy right now. Again, you want to look at the large caps. You want to look at the uh, so those large companies. You want to look at their balance sheet. Companies that have lots of cash uh, in reserve, that have less debt, or their debt isn't maturing within the next year or two, right? So, so you're going to have to go into the financial statements, uh, into the uh, into the financial quarterly and the annual reports, and look at their debt maturation uh, uh, schedule to make sure they don't have to refinance a bunch of debt this year, okay? Because, uh, you know, they might have trouble refinancing that debt. Uh, <clears throat> so you want to look at strong, quality companies that, that are going to be able to survive whatever the economy, whatever happens to the economy. Uh, <clears throat> what else? Uh, keep the rate down to half percent if none of the other... Okay, uh, so Jan wants to know, how is the U.S. going to be able to keep the rate down to half a percent, so the mortality rate on coronavirus, if other countries couldn't do it? Okay, well, again, you got to look at a couple of different factors here. One is that, that that mortality rate that we see in other countries, and even in the U.S., even in the U.S., that's 66 deaths right now against about 3,000 cases. That's about 2%, right? Uh, in China, it was 3%. In uh, you know Italy and, and Spain and France, it's much higher. Uh, but you got to understand that that half a percent is on total infected cases, not reported cases, but total infected cases, okay? So again, 80% of people that get this virus uh, just show mild uh, mild flu-like symptoms, right? They don't go in, they don't get tested, they don't go to the doctor because eh, it's just the flu, I'll, I'll get over it, right? Uh, so we have many more, like we said, that, that Professor Johns Hopkins estimates there are at least 50,000 cases in the U.S. right now, upwards of a million uh, or half a million. Uh, so, so if you take the, the deaths, so that's 66 deaths against maybe 50,000 50, cases or against 100,000 cases, then you start seeing, okay, where that half a percent mortality rate actually comes from. Uh, again, though, you know, you really have to look at this by age. If you've got loved ones that are over the age of 60, if you're over the age of 60, this is much more serious. You need to start taking it much more seriously uh, for those people because the mortality rates are much higher for those. Uh, again, uh, 60 to 70, it's about 4%. Uh, 70 to 80, it's about, it's 10%, so one out of 10, and 80 and above, the, uh, about, it's 15%. So almost two in 10 people that get this 80 and above will will die from it. 
Uh, <clears throat> so, so we have to start taking it seriously. Uh, <clears throat> so who else? Who else? Question here. I'm getting really behind on the question, so I'm going to scroll through here and, and take some. Uh, you know, elders are at risk. That ab absolutely, Fed is proper. Fed has been propping up the markets for uh, for quite a while. Um, you know, and that it's just gotten worse. That's that's one of the things that I've really been thinking about over these last few weeks is how does the economy uh, grow with near zero zero interest rates? Okay, it's not necessarily a great thing uh, to be at zero percent interest rates because you know banks are. Uh, really our, our economy runs on that fractional reserve system. And I don't want to get too far into e economics here. I love talking economics, but I don't want to bore you too much with it. But, you know, our economy runs on being able to take out loans from banks and, uh, you know, really apply that to, to more to business, right? Uh, and the banks are able to do that. They're able to use, okay, so they, they have $100 in savings. They're able to loan out $1,000 in, uh, in loans uh, just because of that fractional system. Uh, but if banks won't make those loans, then the whole system grinds to a halt. So, uh, so yeah, you know, zero uh, percent interest rates. Banks don't have an incentive to lend, and and it gets very hard to make money in that environment. Uh, <clears throat> so what else? You know, the British haven't gotten any action at all right now. Yeah, uh, I I mean I like that idea of the the British are using to self isolate uh, the older generations. It's still in the works. They still haven't. They've announced it, but they haven't announced when it is, and they really haven't done a whole lot uh, for it till the, till till now uh, either. So absolutely right on that one. Uh, <clears throat> how much did the markets fall in 08? And that was the banks failed. Okay, so Jim, I, I mean, I don't know if that's you know trying to say that uh, that this is is going to be less or more. But yeah, uh, you know, markets fell about fifty percent in two thousand eight. That was that was a financial crisis, and we're not looking at that right now. Okay, the, the banks are actually very well capitalized right now, uh, doing well. But uh, you know, this is this could be this could be much much worse. Uh, who's this? Mark, Mark did a, a ten dollar. Uh, you know, I don't even, I don't even know what these are called, but I, but I appreciate that, Mark. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark says treatments that seem to work are, uh, you know, chloroquine. Uh, Gilead's so yeah I mean at, the, at this point trying to call you know pharmaceuticals that might benefit uh, it's, it's a little bit harder because I mean the vaccine is so much further out uh, I, I mean I'm not I'm, I'm not a medical background uh, I do have Gilead stock I do have Pfizer I actually bought Thursday I bought some Pfizer stock just because I think it's a good company not necessarily that's gonna benefit from the coronavirus but it's a good company I think it'll do well and uh, it's got a great balance sheet. Uh, so, so I actually, uh, you know, invested in Pfizer as well. Uh, <clears throat> man, I'm gonna scroll through some of these because what? Okay, so uh, what do you think about Alarian MLP and ET? Okay, so uh, Ricardo wants to know about uh, so MLPs, the e, the ET, so which is energy transfer. Some of those other MLPs uh, been hit hard. You know, I've been I've been a, a big proponent of the MLPs for for quite a while. I own the AMLP, which is the Alarian MLP uh, fund. I own quite a few of the individual MLPs, and uh, you know these are these are strong cash flow investments. Uh, you know, obviously nobody could have foreseen the Saudis and Russia getting into a fight over the oil price. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously oil prices have been hit. Those those MLPs have been hit. Oil and energy have been hit. But uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I think I think if you look at Whenever you, okay, we're gonna stop for the 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 motorcycle going through. Okay, whenever you look at these MLPs, you need to look at that distributable cash flow. So the cash flow coming in, how much they're distributing it, how they cover that distribution, uh, and really be picking the the strong ones. You know, like we said, pretty much with the overall market and stocks, you want to be in stable, financially strong companies. Okay. So for MLPs, you just go in there, you look at their DCF, that distributable cash flow. You look at how much they're paying out, so that distribution, and you want to make sure that uh, that they have enough to cover that, even if uh, you know, even if that that volume they're passing through the pipelines falls a little bit because of this uh, this energy recession. Uh, so I mean, I do like ET Energy Transfer. I, I own that uh, MLP actually. I own the AMLP. Uh, <clears throat> who else? Uh, pipeline stocks, DCP getting killed. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm in it for the long term. Uh, I mean, like I said, uh, I think this is really about you know how long you have to invest. Uh, I've got you know 20, 30 years to invest. Really, I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm not worried about retirement for myself. Okay, uh, I, I'm never gonna stop doing this because I love talking with you on, on YouTube. 
Um, so I'm not really worried about uh, retirement. I'm in it for the long term. And so that expands my potential or my possibilities for stocks like a, like the MLPs that I think you know could hurt for the rest of the year, but but will have a very a very bright long term future. Uh, <clears throat> who else? What else we got? Uh, will Uber and Lyft business collapse when the system falls? That's a tough one too. You know, I, I'm actually I have Uber stock. I have for since January. I, I did a video on uh, call options where I bought Uber and Pinterest after the big drops. Uh, sold call options against those, so it kind of it protected my downside a little bit. So I'm actually still, even with the drop in Uber uh, stock, then I'm still positive on the investment because I've made money on those covered call options. Um, and I think they'll, they'll do okay. You, what, again, what you want to look at is the balance sheet on these. You want to look at their cash on hand. You want to look at uh, their debt, their, their interest payments on the income statement that they're having to make and see, okay, <clears throat> you know, how far can revenues fall and they still be able to meet those interest payments, right? And when are the debt maturities on those interest on those loans that they need? They have those big tranches of debt maturing, and they need to uh, to pay for. Uh, I haven't really looked at Lyft quite as much, but I still like Uber. I mean, I I think it's a very innovative company, not necessarily only in their their rideshare program, but in their AI programs. Uh, a lot of the stuff that they've got planned for the future, and uh, and I, I still think the uh, it could be a, a good strong stock. Uh, over the next couple of years. Uh, <clears throat> what else do we have? Uh, love the put option, uh, ET and shale. Uh, what do you think of CODX? I really don't know CODX. Uh, I mean, I can I can open it up and see, but Jess thinks Uber is going bust. Not necessarily. I, I don't think I don't think it's there yet. I don't think it will be there. Uh, <clears throat> if we get those cars and drive themselves. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, thoughts on REITs? Yeah, okay, real estate investment trusts. I think REITs are a great opportunity to uh, to diversify your portfolio outside of stocks, kind of seek a little bit of safety. What I will say for REITs, though, okay, so these are companies that invest in commercial real estate, pass that on to, uh, you know, on to, on to the investors. What I will say about REITs is, you know, while I still like the VNQ, that's the Vanguard Real Estate Fund, so it holds all these companies, all these different commercial or all these different property types, I think you need to be cautious here. You need to be looking at REITs that own specific property types. Okay, so I would avoid, obviously, I think I would avoid right now the hotel REITs. I would avoid the shopping mall REITs. I've been avoiding those for a while. Um, I would avoid, so any retail space, uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, maybe even office, okay, because so as people are working from home uh, with this, then obviously, you know, office space is going to be in less demand. Now, you know, obviously, okay, so, so with these REITs, con with these uh, lease contracts that commercial real estate has, it's, it's years, okay? Somebody might sign, excuse me, might sign a three or a five or even a 10-year lease on this property space. Uh, so that's going to help support it a little bit. But, you know, one, it does nothing if that company goes bankrupt, okay? So you're still going to see a lot of retail bankruptcies uh, weighing on that retail property space. But two, there are still going to be constantly uh, these leases that need to re-up during this crisis. And, uh, and you know, those, those are going to have to take huge concessions, the, uh, the property owners, on those. So I would definitely be cautious in the real estate space, uh, uh, some of those cyclical ones like, uh, like office, like hotel, like retail, uh, and focus more on the non-cyclical uh, property spaces. So those REITs that own, you know, maybe uh, industrial, maybe uh, probably a little bit better, Warehouse maybe a little bit better. Storage is probably a little bit uh, a little bit less cyclical than some of those. So looking at some of those REITs rather than the, the more cyclical ones. Uh, Ten percent of holding is is in oil. Yeah, I, I think I think you can do well with with oil. Uh, like we said, um, there is ninety two million barrels they can put into the strategic reserve right now. Uh, that's uh, and the the president just announced. Uh, Friday that he was going to start buying oil for the for the strategic reserve. Uh, so basically, if we look at what, what what happened with oil, you know, the Saudis wanted to cut another one one and a half million out of production for each. Uh, you know, I think it was each day. Um, the Russians didn't want to. Uh, so so of course, you know, now the Saudis are, are going to pump as much as they can. Everyone OPEC wants to pump as much oil as they can. Well, you know, so if so if we've got 92 million barrels available of space in the strategic reserve, that means uh, you know the president, the administration can buy 
you know, a, a million barrels a day uh, f off the market, off the U.S. market, support those prices to, to really where it, um, almost it was uh, before. Uh, <clears throat> so, so definitely some support for oil prices there. Uh, what else we got? Uh, 5G companies like Arison. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I still like the telecoms. I think, I think the telecom space is going to be one that does really well on 5G and will be relatively safer uh, in this market. So if you look at Look at the telecoms and look at the pure play telecoms, right? So a lot of, I know a lot of you like AT&T uh, and, and it's actually probably in some markets that are still also relatively safe, you know, as far as streaming and, and that, but they're not a pure play telecom. Uh, so if you want those, that pure play telecom for the 5G, for the safety, then yeah, look at, look at companies like Nokia, look at companies like Verizon and, and that kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> super, super Google Lee, uh, another $15 uh, 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 thing there. I don't. I don't know what those those are called. Fifteen dollar YouTube bonus things or whatever. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, he wants to know: uh, Is it a good time to buy Bitcoin or wait for lower? Uh, so Bitcoin lost like fifty percent of its value over the last uh, few days, uh, and I, I just want to see see the price here. What was it? It was about six thousand, five thousand. So Bitcoin's fallen to five thousand. I think here you can start to kind of. Kind of get into Bitcoin uh, again, just like stocks. I would make it that disciplined approach. So maybe you buy. Okay, so if you want to put a hundred dollars in Bitcoin, just you know, uh, I, obviously you, you're not going to invest a hundred dollars in Bitcoin at five thousand. But let's say hundred dollars of uh, Bitcoin, I would put maybe twenty five percent of that in now. So twenty five to 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 thirty five percent of your money in Bitcoin now. And then say, okay, if Bitcoin falls to four thousand, I'm going to put this much more into it. If it falls to three thousand, I'm going to put the rest of it into it. Okay. So again, not necessarily, not necessarily trying to time the market, but it just gives you a disciplined approach to be able to take advantage of lower prices if they do come along. Uh, <clears throat> so so eventually you, you just get a much larger rebound. Uh, you know, at Bitcoin at five thousand, it's getting very close to that intrinsic value, and we've talked about this on the channel before about how you can measure. Uh, the value of uh, social platforms, and this happens just not just for Bitcoin, but for Facebook, for Twitter, any of those platforms uh, that that run off of that social idea, right? And there's actually a, uh, I think it's Metcalfe's law says that uh, you can value these by a, uh, you know, by an exponential of the active users. Okay, so and that ends up being, I think it's right around 3,500 is actually that that base intrinsic value for 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 Bitcoin. So I think I would be looking at that value as, as a, a good entry point, a great entry point, really. Uh, but I think you can start kind of, you know, this four and five thousand. I, I think you can start kind of uh, putting some money into that because, you know, it will be up to six, seven, ten thousand uh, sometime in the future. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, how do you video using calls and puts? Uh, Baidu and Baba, yeah, yay or nay? Uh, the Chinese stocks actually look really good. If you look at uh, the Chinese stocks versus the U.S. market versus a lot of the other markets, they've actually been doing very well over these last two weeks as uh, or last few weeks as as the Chinese uh, economy or the market has started to rebound from this virus. Uh, so it was it was relatively quick uh, and, and you know I don't want to say painless because that that's really insensitive to to how bad it was. Uh, but it was relatively quick in China. A lot of these stocks, um, Baidu and Baba, uh, Alibaba. I like Alibaba. Actually, I like both of them. I think I like Alibaba a little bit better. Uh, I'm actually a big, uh, big into Luckin Coffee. Uh, a lot of you, anyone here in the nation, has heard me talk about Luckin before, and I think you're gonna be hearing a lot about that company uh, in the near in the future over the next ten years. They're uh, you're basically the competitors to Starbucks in China. Uh, they've got more. <clears throat> they've got more sites in China now than, than Starbucks, I believe. They're also expanding into their own tea brand, into vending machines, and uh, and, and that's that's going to be the company to watch, I think, in China. But also uh, Baidu and Baba, yeah, I, I like those both of those as well. Uh, uh, <clears throat> who else do we have? Uh, so we got another uh, another uh, YouTube bonus from uh, Blooming Blooming Rose Blooming Rose Vine. Uh, if you got a question, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I appreciate it. Again, I, I appreciate the, uh, the little YouTube bonus things. Uh, but I, I, you know, I mean, I appreciate just being a part of the community as well. Uh, go to the Facebook group, join the Facebook group, and, and be part of the community there as well as here on YouTube because that's really a, a lot of the reason why I do this is, is just to kind of connect with, with everyone here. Uh, <clears throat> what else? Uh, so, 
Sahid, he wants to know about Boeing, which I would complete. I would. I think I would avoid Boeing right now. Um, that's ticker symbol B A. Uh, I was negative on it after the news broke, and and it didn't fall that much. Uh, this was almost a year ago when the big news broke on the engines, uh, and uh, it's just been in a downward spiral ever since. Uh, this, you know, this this is really the coronavirus is really hitting tra travel, uh, especially the airlines, and I think uh, Boeing is probably still got a lot more pain to come. Okay, it's it's a fairly protected industry. Uh, Boeing and Airbus are pretty much the only two names. Uh, in in um, you know airplane manufacturing right now, so longer term, uh, you you know you could probably start looking at getting into it eventually, but but right now I just I just do not like it uh, right now with this this coronavirus plus all the other problems they've had uh, lately. Uh, <clears throat> so Carrie says she just retires has a good amount of cash, but fifty percent still in the market. Should I get some money out now and and get it back in after the drop? Okay, well, and perfect example. If you just retired, 50% uh, in the market probably isn't too bad. You know, if you've got a lot of cash, uh, and we just talked about, uh, I think it was Monday, we finished up our three-part series, three-video series on, you know, investing by age. So definitely go back, look at that retirement investing video, okay, because I give you three uh, scenario or three strategies to invest during retirement, how to Pretty much guarantee that you have money to cover your living expenses, but also taking advantage of the uh, of the market, the growth in the market, and that kind of thing. So you're definitely going to want want to watch that. Either you know use kind of a bucket strategy, a bucket investing strategy, where you have you know your next uh, 18 months of expenses covered in uh, in that cash bucket, money market accounts, cash, that kind of thing, uh, and then the rest in you know safer income stuff, so you can refill it. And then in the third one, in a little bit more growth names in the uh, the stock market. So it's really going to depend on uh, you know how much you need to live, how much you got uh, in assets there. Uh, but definitely check out that video because because uh, it's going to really help you out with this one. Uh, <clears throat> what else? Uh, Bitcoin uh, agree with different investment options would be nice. So so Hood wants different investment options again. That video in our Facebook group coming out in about 20 minutes, uh, five stocks that I think could actually benefit from this coronavirus. Uh, be sure to click over there. I've got a link in the, uh, the comments uh, to this video, to the live stream, uh, to get over to that or just look for on Facebook. It's called uh, Let's Talk Money Together. It's a group. Uh, we've got some great conversations there. And, and that video at uh, 2.30 Eastern, actually going to uh, show you, uh, you know, yeah, 2.30 Eastern is actually going to. I uh, share five uh, five stocks that I think you can buy right now and, and will benefit from the coronavirus. Uh, <clears throat> who else do we have uh, here? Uh, holding three 27 expires put options on TQQ. Should I extend to longer expiration date? Okay, so Kevin has some put options in the TQQQ, which uh, what's the the TQQQ? I believe is the uh, on the Nasdaq, right? Uh, TQQQ. ProShares Ultra Pro uh, Triple Q, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, it's something like this. I would, I would probably take my money in it. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a, imagine, you know, March 27th puts. Uh, you've probably made pretty darn good money over the last few weeks. I think I would take that money and just set it in cash. Uh, you know, while I say, while I do say that the the market will likely go down more. Uh, you know, I, I think I would rather have you if you want to want protection, then maybe maybe sell some calls on your stocks, uh, so you still have a little bit of upside, but you have some some downside protection as well. You hold some cash, uh, maybe make sure you have your bonds and your real estate exposure, so your REITs and your bond funds. Make sure you have those. Uh, I'm not a huge proponent of uh, you know paying for this protection, so buying put options a lot of times. You know, I'll buy I'll buy puts on the SPY every once in a while. Uh, and you can consider that, but uh, especially the ultras, you know, so the TQQQ, the ultras tend to be more expensive uh, to buy puts on those. Uh, <clears throat> so what else? Uh, t -t 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 what other questions do we have? Forbes would be a long position. Uh, do you think it would be... <clears throat> Who else do we have? Uh, I was wondering, what would you recommend for people with not much money and a lot of time, turning 18 in a couple of weeks and thinking of investing? So a shoe has uh, is turning 18, uh, not much money, which you know I mean that's typical. It's typical the 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 younger investors have lots of time but not not, not much money. And I'd say the same thing that I that I, is actually the best thing anybody can do is is 
to worry about making that income. You know, finding a job that you love doing, you get paid to do, uh, and that you get paid well. You know, and, and that might not necessarily be your main job now, uh, but start creating those that side hustle, that online business, uh, something that is going to make you that extra money, and uh, so you can have more to and to uh, to take advantage of these lower prices. Uh, <clears throat> I just asked my question twice, but I thought okay. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, MCD is a kind of REIT that one thinks about. Yeah, you know, Snowfire uh, says uh, McDonald's, so ticker MCD there is a kind of REIT uh, and, and probably another good one. I would be worried about McDonald's um, because, you know, yeah, as this coronavirus gets worse, then uh, they're going to have to start closing stores, okay, because people just aren't going to be out, uh, especially if we have the kind of travel restrictions or, uh, you know, the kind of quarantine restrictions as they're doing in in uh, in the uh in in europe right now now mcdonald's is partially protected because a lot of those the majority of those stores are actually franchises uh so the actual mcdonald's corporation might not get hit quite as bad but you know obviously if those franchises those franchises are are a little less less protected uh and more likely to bankrupt so you could start seeing a lot of these these uh these franchisees uh, go bankrupt a lot of mcds closing down so uh you know, I mean, if you're if you're into MCD, if you're buying into McDonald's, I think I would probably buy some some uh, some call options against it, uh, just to kind of downside protect a little bit more. Uh, obviously, solid company at that corporate level, uh, lots of cash on the balance sheet, lots of uh, lots of financial flexibility and strength. But it's the individual fi- fran- franchise that I would be worried about, uh, or franchisees. Uh, obviously, I think if, if this happens in bulk, that a lot of franchisees start falling behind and start bankrupting and that kind of thing, then the corporate uh, McDonald's is going to help them, uh, you know, quite a bit. But uh, but again, you know, I, I'd be cautious there. Uh, Cody, Cody wants to know thoughts on Carnival Cruise, and this is something we covered a little bit earlier in the uh, in the live stream. Um, these these travel related stocks, I've got a I've got my list too. I've got my list of hotel stocks, car rentals, uh, airlines, cruise lines. Uh, but I am not not there yet. Uh, definitely not there yet because I think this is going to get a lot worse, uh, even with government backing, even with some kind of government bailout fund for these and low cost loans. Uh, this this is still going to get much worse, and, and these are obviously the front lines, the the companies that are going to get hit first and hardest uh, by this. So I would wait. Uh, there is a point I think where you can look at these and say, okay, you know, and maybe this is. Maybe this is where this is March. I'd say maybe into April and May. Maybe you can start looking at these uh, and finding those solid companies that are going to be able to survive. That's the most important thing because you're going to have bankruptcies uh, in a lot of these companies. Uh, so so look at their balance sheet. Make sure they have strong cash on hand. Make sure they don't have uh, maturities of their debt happening this year. Uh, maybe even next year if, if they only have uh, stuff coming out of 2022. Uh, so, so they're able to cover their inter- their interest payments and uh, and and everything else. Uh, so, but I would I would definitely wait on those tourism travel uh, related stocks. Uh, <clears throat> what else? Uh, what else we do? Uh, CCL. Everybody wants to, everybody wants to know about CCL. Yeah, and, and yeah, I, I still own some shares. I own a very small amount of shares from uh, from January. I'll 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 sit on them. Uh, but I, I won't be buying more for, for quite a while, uh, just to just to make sure that that they're they're going to be able to survive. Uh, <clears throat> fresh water, sleep, and make you feel better. Not necessarily fresh water and sleep. Uh, yeah, for eighty percent of the people that get this, it's just a, a mild flu. But that's not what we have to worry about. We have to worry about the twenty percent of the population that is very uh, very much at risk. And it's not just about you. It's it's about you being a carrier that gets the virus to these people. That's what we got to watch out for. And that's why we got to take this thing seriously. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, Christina wants to know about Intel and the chip makers. Uh, you know, haven't really looked at them uh, in, in a few months. Uh, I would say they're probably fairly less, uh, you know, relatively safer, but, you know, they're, they're very cyclical stocks. So, so you know, I wouldn't be buying into them now. Um, I'd stick with the larger ones like like Intel, you know, maybe Broadcom, uh, the larger companies that are going to have that financial strength and flexibility to survive no matter what comes. But uh, I would definitely be worried right now because they're so cyclical. Uh, economic growth is going to drop off a cliff when we start seeing these these quarterly results out of uh, you know out of out of different uh, different companies. 
Uh, who else? Uh, you know, uh, Randy wants to know about Lockheed Martin. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, aerospace and defense. Um, obviously, the airline part of aerospace and the, the plane maker part of aerospace is going to be really weak, but I still like defense. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's one you can look at. They're going to be relatively safer. Uh, <clears throat> what else do we have here? Uh, social media stocks, we just, we just kind of covered those. Uh, you know, social media, I think we'll do relatively well, obviously, because, you know, if people are stuck at home, they're going to be on social media. They're going to be talking uh, a lot. So, so, yeah, I think you can look at... Uh, Facebook. I actually own some Facebook, not a whole lot. Uh, I own uh, I own Pinterest. I've owned that since the big uh, the big leg down in I believe uh, in it was January. I sold some calls against that. Uh, so so definitely you know uh, some of the cheaper and stronger uh, social media stocks. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we are we are heading on a, an hour and twenty into this thing. I love all the comments, all the questions. Uh, if I didn't get to your question, I'm sorry. There were tons of them on this one. Uh, so ask them in the comments section below and I'll definitely get to them. Check out that Facebook group. Go click through the link, join the Facebook group because we got some great conversations on there. Uh, and we've got that in 10 minutes. We've got that video coming out 10 minutes on the private Facebook group. Five stocks that I would buy in this. In fact, five stocks that I'm going to buy uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, I think I think uh, five stocks, five companies that can benefit from this virus can actually see revenues uh, revenues increasing. So uh, click on over, join us in the Facebook group, and I will see you there.